Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karen and welcome back for another video. Today I'm setting up my teaching related pages in my new Archer and Olive A5 journal. This is the journal that I'll be using for the second half of the year, so July through to December. Originally I was intending on putting the setup of these pages in my other setup video for this journal, but by the time I'd finished setting up my front of journal pages, that video was getting kinda long, so I figured I'd just put these ones in their own separate video. The first layout that I'm setting up here are my term calendars. So on the left hand page I've got one for term 3, and on the right hand page I've got term 4. Each of these is set up so that there is a box for each day of the term, so 5 columns for Monday through Friday, and then a row for each week of the term, so 9 rows for term 3 and 8 rows for term 4. I set up layouts similar to this one here in my last bullet journal, found them to be really helpful but I didn't actually put them all together with my other teaching related spreads. Instead, they were just in amongst my monthlies and weeklies. For this journal though, I figured it would be a good idea to have them all together so that they're more easily referenceable. This is a trick that I've used for pretty much all of my bullet journals. Anything that I want to be able to easily reference, I'll either have at the front as part of my start of journal setup, or I'll put at the back because they're the easiest places to turn to. Here you can see I'm going in and labelling the week numbers, and then I also put the initials for each day of the week along the top. The space at the bottom of the right hand page I'm going to use to put in a key, so having different colours for different due dates for my classes. I don't put that key in in this video though, because I'm actually not too sure what my class schedule is going to look like next term. One of our teachers is leaving at the end of the term, and it hasn't been decided yet as to who's going to be getting her classes. So not sure at this stage as to whether my classes are going to change. In terms of timing though, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, these term calendars took eight and a half minutes. It was then over the page and onto my teaching related year at a glance. On this page I just put in a year long calendar, and then I can mark each day of the year with colours depending on what's happening on that day. So a certain colour for holidays, a certain colour for staff only days, and I also like to record when my sick days are mainly so I can see if there are any patterns year to year, but also so I can keep track of how much sick leave I'm taking. This one was certainly the most time consuming single page of the setup, coming in at 35 minutes, but of course that is to be expected given all of the mini calendars, writing out all of those numbers, but then also transferring the data over from my teaching related year at a glance from my last bullet journal. Next time I do this, I am certainly considering just using a printable. <laughs> Half a hand cramp later though, this one was finished and it was on to the right hand side of the spread, where I'm going to be putting in some countdowns for the end of the year. The one I'm setting up first in the bottom half is a countdown based on the number of class periods I have each week. On this one I have a larger column for each of my classes, and I have a row for each week of terms 3 and 4. I then go and divide each of those larger columns into 4 again, to represent 4 class periods throughout the week. For one of my classes I actually have an odd timetable this year, where one week I've got five periods and then the next week I've got three, and for my middle school classes I actually only have seven periods per fortnight, so for any week that I don't need a box I'm just going to fill it in with black, and then for that class where I have a 5-3 split, I'll just treat it as if they have four each week. Not ideal, but this was the easiest way to fit my countdown into the space that I have. For the top half of this page I'm putting in another countdown, but this one's using a square style tracker that I have available on my Patreon. For this one I'm doing the countdown by day rather than by period. So each side of the square tracker is separated into 8 segments, one to indicate what week number we're in, and the other 7 segments for the 7 days of the week. As the days pass I'll colour in the square associated with those days. So for instance once I stick this one in you'll see that term 3 week 1 is at the top, and it has 7 days for Monday through to Sunday. Then we go down the right hand side with week 2 of term 3, along the bottom with week 3 of term 3, and so on. Wherever I put a dot on this one just represents a holiday week. So I've got two dots to represent the break between terms 3 and 4, and one dot to represent the first week of the summer holidays. After 18 minutes though, that page was done, and we're on to my lesson scheduler pages. These pages are the ones that I deem the most important when it comes to setting up my teaching related spreads, and I do have a separate video on them if you were wondering how they work. Each of my lesson scheduler pages took 13 and a half minutes from first touch of the pen, so considering I had four of them this was a combined total of 54 minutes. 
As I said though, they are the most valuable in terms of my teaching related pages, so I'm not too fussed about spending the time to set them up. You'll note that when I set up my teaching pages, I don't put anything in like a mark book to record student grades. I don't have any super detailed pages relating to lesson planning, so figuring out the structure and content of lessons. I also don't include anything related to professional development and things like that, and maybe some other stuff that you might commonly find in a teacher planner. Mainly because most of that stuff I do digitally instead. So using things like my digital mark books, OneNote, things like that. As with any setup in your journal, it's always good to consider how you actually like to plan, because there's no point setting up a bunch of spreads that you're just not going to use. I could spend the time and effort to set up markbook pages in here, but I know I'm not going to use them, so it would kind of end up being wasted effort. Question of the day for you guys though, what work-related pages do you put into your journal? This could be work in terms of like a job or career, or any other kinds of work. Along with the ones that I set up in this video, I do also like to have some topic planning pages, which are really just lists of all the lessons in a topic, which I can cross off once all the materials for them are sorted. For those ones though, I will have to wait until I know what classes I'm teaching for the rest of the year before I set them up. For a final flip through of the ones I set up in this video though, we have my term calendar pages, my teaching related year at a glance, and my countdown until the end of the year pages and then my lesson scheduler pages. I'm really quite eager to populate these ones, so I'm hoping that our timetable for next term gets sorted soon. Patience is a virtue that I don't have. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video or at least found it interesting, and if you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. If you hadn't already and felt so inclined, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. And until next time, team, bye.